Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you how to do multi-room audio on the cheap. So I recently got this Amazon Echo Dot and I'm really happy with it. The problem with it is I can only listen to it here and even if I connect it up to for example a Bluetooth speaker or to an external speaker I'm only getting it in one other place. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to connect up my equipment around the house but I didn't want to spend a lot of money. So what I've done is I've connected it to things like TVs and my old CD player and stuff. So I've got multi-room audio, but for not a lot of money. So I've spent under £100 to get this set up. And while you can get a lot better systems, like for example the Sonos system, they're really expensive and you're going to be paying probably over £1,000 to get multi-room. So if you follow the steps in this video, hopefully you might be able to reuse some of your equipment and it might work for you. Now what I'm going to do is it's going to be a long video. So to begin with, I'm going to show you what I want it to do. Then I'm going to show you how it's ended up and then after that I'm going to show you all the wiring involved because some of you might not be interested in seeing all the wiring but if you are, look to the very end and then I will show you how to make all the leads, for example the 3.5mm audio to RJ45 so you can run it through all your network wiring. So to begin with I'm just going to show you basically what I want it to do. So I've got the Amazon Echo Dot living here in the kitchen and that's fine but it was only coming out of this little speaker here. I could have got the Echo for £150. This, this one here is only £50. I could have got the £150 one that has much better speakers but I can still only listen to it in one room or wherever you can hear the speaker. So basically what I want to be able to do is listen to this all over the house. I also want to be able to talk to it from anywhere in the house. So if I was in an upstairs bedroom, I don't want to have to be shouting downstairs. I want to be able to just say, Alexa, play Frank Sinatra, and then I want it to be able to start playing. Secondly, I also want to be able to use it in the bathroom as well. So if you're having a bath, you will be able to use it. So I'm going to show you the rooms I wanted it working in and then I'm going to show you where I actually ended up having it working. So I wanted it working in the kitchen because it's already here. I wanted it working in this room here because this is where I work so I wanted it working here. I wanted it working in this room here and then I wanted it working in most of the bedrooms upstairs so I wanted it working in my son's room. I wanted it working in this room here on the old CD player. I wanted it working in the bathroom and I also wanted it working in my daughter's bedroom. Now, rather than going out and buying all new speakers and everything, I wanted to reuse what was already here. So what I thought to myself is, I've got TVs dotted everywhere, they've got speakers on them. Although the speakers are not gonna be great quality, it's good enough for me. Now, what I will say is, if you're really into your music, you probably don't wanna be listening through things like the TVs and stuff like that. But for me, it's absolutely fine. I'm actually quite happy with the sound quality that comes out of the speakers, probably because I've never had top-end equipment anyway. But what I wanted to do is just reuse what I had to cut down on costs. So basically, that's, uh, that's what I wanted, and now I'm gonna show you what I actually ended up with. So let's go back to the kitchen. Okay, so, got the Amazon Echo Dot, which cost 50 pounds. I also bought this Amazon remote control for Alexa, for the Echo and the Echo Dot. This was 20 pounds. And I also bought a nice little Anchor Bluetooth speaker. I think this was about 16 or 17 pounds. These products were all from Amazon. So let me just show you it working. So at the moment, I've got this Amazon here connected up to some head speakers. So I've had to use a 3.5 millimeter audio out. I'm gonna go into details about the wiring at the end of the video. But basically, when you plug in a 3.5 millimeter jack into the back, the speaker on this will no longer work. Also, when you use Bluetooth, the 3.5 millimeter jack will no longer work. So you can't have it working through the 3.5 millimeter jack and Bluetooth, which is a shame. Now remember, this video is done in March 2017, so if you're watching this in a couple of years' time, maybe they will have released something, some software that you will be able to use a 3.5 on Bluetooth, or maybe they will have released it where you can connect numerous Bluetooth speakers up to it, because at the moment, you can only connect one Bluetooth speaker to this, so you can't have multi-room by having multiple Bluetooth speakers around the place. So anyway, it's here now. So for example, if I was to say, Alexa, Play Fur Release by Beethoven. Fur Release by Evelyn Jubor and Ludwig van Beethoven. 
Alexa, volume 10. Okay, so I've got it working in here with the speakers up there at the moment. And now if we come into this room here, and just take this one off mute. I've got it working here as well, let me lower that down. So I've got it working off that TV there. Just mute that one again. Let's go into the main room. Again, if I take this one off mute, so I've got it working here. So it's working there, the back room and the kitchen all at the same time. And now if we go into this room here and if we take it, put it onto the auxiliary input. You can hear now that I've got it working here. Go into the other room. Now I just have to change the input on this TV. Take it off mute. And you can see I've got it working here as well. Right, so as you can see, that's working on all the TVs here. Now let me show you it working in the bathroom via the Bluetooth speaker. So with the Bluetooth speaker, it's nice and simple. When I pair it up to here, it will no longer work via the three-point aux jack, so it won't work in all the other rooms. It will only work on here. So this is only going to be useful now if you just want to have a bath, for example, and you want this in the room here. Or, for example, if you didn't want multi-room, if you just wanted to bring this to whatever room you wanted to listen to music in, then you could just bring this device with you and it wouldn't play anywhere else. Now, to play it, for me to be able to talk to Alexa, she's not gonna be able to hear me from up here because now we're upstairs in the bathroom and Alexa's down in the kitchen. So that's why I got this remote control here because all I've got to do is tap this button here and I can still communicate with Alexa because it works on Bluetooth back to the Echo Dot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this on and I'm going to turn on Bluetooth and then it will stop the music playing everywhere else and it will come over to here. So at the moment that song stopped now so let's just do it for example a playlist by Frank Sinatra. Play Frank Sinatra. So you can see it's still working around the house at the moment. Let me just lower down the volume. Volume 5. There we go. And also, you can use this to do your volume as well. So, for example, I can go up and it will get louder and I can go down. Or, if you don't like the track, you can forward the track or back the track or pause it. So, right now it's paused. Unpause it and fast forward it. That will, sorry, that will put it to the next track. And you can still ask Alexa questions. So, if I was to say, for example, when you use this, you don't have to say Alexa, by the way. You just press and hold the microphone button. So. What time is it in California? The time in California is There you go. Okay, so now we want to turn on Bluetooth. We want to get it connected to this one here. So I'm going to turn on the speaker and I'm going to go connect to Bluetooth. And now it's coming out of this one here. So let's just put the volume up. There we go, so that's maximum volume, but remember I can still control the volume via here. And it's getting quieter. And now, let it get it louder. And you can also still ask it questions, it will come out here, so. What's the weather like in Australia, Sydney? In Sydney, Australia. It's 24 degrees with mostly... Okay, so you get the idea. Now, the other good thing about the little... Now, put that on pause. The other good thing about this is you can actually use this thing itself without the remote control. So let's say if you didn't buy the remote control, you just had this and you wanted to take it up to your bathroom. Now, remember, this isn't waterproof, but if you want to take it to a room or leave it, obviously, outside the bath, remember, it's only battery operated, so you're not going to get electrocuted. But obviously, if you get this wet, it will fail. But you can actually skip the tracks on here. So right now, I haven't got the remote control. And if I just press play, 
And now I can skip tracks by just holding down this plus button for more than a second. And now that's the next track. Hold it down again. And it will be the next track. Then if you want to go back to the previous track, you can just hold down the minus button. Okay, and you can pause it. There, and now you can unpause it. There you go. Okay, so the Bluetooth speaker is quite handy, and then if I want to bring it back to the 3.5mm aux for the rest of the room, I just say, turn off Bluetooth. There you go, Bluetooth's now disconnected, and now it's playing everywhere else. Right, okay, now let's put that on pause. Now, the problem I've got is, remember, this remote control here only works via Bluetooth, and now I'm starting to get quite a distance away from the downstairs kitchen. But if I don't have a Bluetooth signal, I can still make it work via a Wi Fi signal. So when you download the Alexa app, which you have to do because you need to just download the app to set up the Echo Dot in the first place. What you can then do is you go to the Alexa app. You can see now it says Frank Sinatra playing. I can play it here. I can adjust the volume. So even if you haven't got the remote control, because Bluetooth doesn't work over huge distances, you can still connect up via Wi-Fi via the app and you can still do stuff, but obviously you can't use your voice, you physically have to use your phone to do it. But if you want to choose your music, you can do. You just go to Home and then go to Music and Books, Prime Music. Now you have to have Amazon Prime or Spotify. You have to have one of these streaming services to be able to do it. So now if I was to go to Playlists and then for example Genres and you could do you know Classic Rock and then if I was to hit that one there, it will now start to play that one. Put the volume up a bit. Yeah? Okay, so there you go. It's a, a nice, relatively simple way to get multi-room audio without spending an absolute fortune by using what you've already got. Because most of you probably will have CD players or an old hi-fi. As long as you've got an aux in, so an input on it that you can put external music into it, then you'll be able to use it. But the good thing is as well, is things like TVs. Now, TVs can be fussy because I did actually want the multi-room working in this room here. But annoyingly, although this TV is a good TV, it's a Samsung Smart TV, it has got phonos in, but for some reason it wouldn't work. It didn't matter how I made my adapters, every time I tried to connect just a sound into this, it wouldn't play. Yet, if I was to use a component lead, then it would work. It's just for some reason it didn't let the audio in without using the picture side of it as well. Now, I had that on other TVs as well. So on the TV downstairs, I often use that for a VGA input in, and I have an audio into that. And it works fine when I'm using it on my laptop for the picture and sound. But yet, what if I just want to put just the sounds into it? It didn't work. So I had to connect it up via a SCART adapter. I had to go via the SCART to get audio into it. Now, annoyingly, with this TV, it doesn't have SCART. But I've got another TV downstairs that does have SCART and that didn't allow audio in either. So before you try this, try doing it, for example, your iPod or your phone first. Just get the lead and plug it into your TVs to see if it's gonna work. So out of my TVs, I had one, two, I had three, I had four TVs that did work, but I had another three TVs that didn't work and it didn't matter what combination I did, whether I went in through the, uh, the audio in from the PC side of it, whether I went through the RCA or through the RCA through the component, it still didn't make a difference. I couldn't get audio into those TVs at all. So bear in mind that it might not work on everything. You will have to do your testing first of all. Now, just before I show you the setup, I just want to show you why having something like this is useful. So let's go to the other room now. Now remember, the remote control doesn't work great in that room, but it does work in this room. 
you will have to test yourself. If you've got a big old house with lava and plaster ceilings and nice slick floorboards and stuff, then that might block the signal more. In this particular house, although the distance is quite big, it's a cheaper house, it's like got chipboard floorings and plasterboard walls and stuff, so it's a lot thinner, so the Bluetooth signal will travel better. But for example now, let's say if my daughter was doing her homework in here and she was wanting to you know, listen to music or even forget about music, let's say now if she didn't want it working anywhere else, I can turn off the TVs and stuff downstairs or put them to a different input and then she can be up here and for example she can ask it you know homework related questions so what is the square root of 81 the square root of 81 is 9 there you go well, what is 60 times 3 60 multiplied by 3 is 180 how do you spell fantastic Fantastic is spelled F A N T A S T I C. Okay, so you get the idea, and you can also listen to your audio books and stuff from here as well. So having the remote control is a really useful feature because yes, you can do it on your phone, but it's a lot quicker just to press the button and just ask it questions. So that's the reason I wanted to get the remote control to allow me to be able to control it in other rooms in the house. Granted, in your house, you might only be able to control it in a very short distance. Here, I'm kind of lucky, but not lucky enough that it works in all the rooms, so I have to rely on my phone in the other room. It's a shame that this doesn't work everywhere, but there's nothing I can do to boost that signal unless maybe I was to relocate the Amazon Echo Dot to a more central area in the house, which would then sort of distribute the signal because it's more central, it, I might be able to get it working in more places. So bear that in mind if you are going to go down this route, maybe have a play around with where to site that Amazon Echo Dot because it works on Wi-Fi, so you can site, site it anywhere for Wi-Fi signal and a power adapter. So even if you weren't really intending on using it in, for example, your hallway, if that was the best location to put it, then you can get this and you can just use this for your voice commands. Right, let me show you the setup now. Right, okay, now for the boring part, the wiring part. So hopefully some of you are still watching this and you're interested in how I managed to get this all around the house. Now, in this house here, I have Cat6 cable running everywhere. So it's all, you know, in every single room, I've either got four or eight ports. Now, what I've done is I've run the 3.5 millimeter audio signal via the Cat6 wiring. Now, you might not want to do this or might not have to do it. Let's just say if you just wanted it working in one or two places. If you haven't got any wiring installed anywhere, it might be just as easy for you to get some long leads. Now this is a 10 meter, 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter jack. You can get these in 20 meter. I haven't even looked. You can probably get them 25, 30 meter. It's good because the signal doesn't actually degrade too much because remember, Everything, everything we're plugging into, they're not passive speakers, they've got their own power supply. So the TV has its own power supply to power the speakers. The hi-fi upstairs has its own power supply. The only thing that hasn't, well even the Bluetooth speaker has its own battery power supply. So if you were to just connect some really old fashioned or passive speakers, so that's without the power supply, then you would probably get a hell of a lot of loss on this cable and you would probably find it's very weak by the time it gets to those speakers. But if it's an active, if it's a speaker with its own power supply, then you will be able to use long lengths of these. Now, I haven't measured the distances on mine, but for example, I've got a 10 meter cable between here and here because I didn't have any shorter cables. Then it runs all through the network wire into my patch panel under the stairs and then from there it goes up to the different rooms. So we must be talking about 30 to 40 metres and I haven't had any problems with it. So if you just want to, for example, connect it in two places, what you could do is you could get yourself a little, uh, if you have a look here, you could get yourself a little splitter, headphone splitter like this. You can even get these that have about five outlets. So you have like one male one and then five female. This is just one male to two female. But all you do is you plug this in to your Amazon Dots and then you plug in one cable into here and then you can put that as the aux in to, for example, your Hi-Fi and then you can have another cable in and then you can connect up, uh, possibly you might have a 3.5 millimeter, pretend this is a 3.5 millimeter in here, to a twin phono or twin RCA and then you could connect that up to your TV and use the input for that. Right, okay, so that's how you would do 
that side of it. So that would be really straightforward. But what I've done is I've actually wired it into my network wiring. So what I've had to do is I've had to kind of butcher the 3.5 millimeter leads to put my own RJ45 plugs onto the end of them. So here you have a 3.5 millimeter to RJ45, and here you have an RJ45 to a twin RCA, a twin phono. Okay, so let me just show you the wiring on how I've done this. It works for me, hopefully it will work for you. So on our 3.5 millimeter plug, we've got tip, ring and sleeve, or some people might call it a ground. So if you were to have a look here, that's the plug here. Now, the tip I've done to pin four on these little adapters here, so on the little RJ45 adapter. So if you look closely, you will see that there's a red wire in pin four, the white wire is in pin five, and the sleeve, which is just a bare copper wire, is in pin eight. So what I've done is the tip to pin four, the ring to pin five, and the sleeve to pin eight. Now, when you're using something like that, straightforward for a 3.5 millimeter to RJ45, but when you're using the twin phono ones, you will find that there's two wires in each of these. So when you get to the RJ45 plug, there will be four wires in it. All you've got to do is use the two wires and then, so for example, the red and the white will go to pins four and five. Yours might be red and green, it might be different colors. And then the two wires that are the sleeve or the ground, you need to twist them together. So basically, these two will be acting as, for example, tip and ring, and then these two here will be the sleeve. So the four wires will actually turn into three wires because we will have our ring and tip, and then we will have the sleeves twisted together. So although there's four wires, when you twist the sleeves together, it will then just make three wires. So if you have a look closely, just to show you both of them, I've done the same setup on every single cable in the house. So red to pin four, white to pin five, and the sleeve to pin eight. Remember that the tab is on the top there. So we're looking at it from the bottom. And then on this one here, I've done red to pin four, white to pin five, and sleeve to pin eight. And just to show you the continuity test, so when I touch the wires together, so if you come close down here now, when I touch the wires together, it will make a noise. So if I go onto the tip, if I go onto the tip here, and then if I go to pin four, there, then if I go onto the ring, which is the middle section, it should be on pin five. One, two, three, four, five. There. And if I go onto the sleeve, also known as the ground, then it should be on pin eight. There we go. Yeah. So that's how I've wired up the cables to allow it to connect to the equipment, but also through my network wiring. So, okay, so just to give you a quick example, hopefully this will make more sense. Pretend now that this is your really long ethernet cable that's running all throughout the house. Yeah, so it's buried in the walls and stuff. Now, if, like me, you've got this cable terminator onto wall sockets, fair enough, but if it is just a cable, then let's put a couple of couplers onto the end of it. And now, you see, that's the same as having wall sockets because we've ended up with two female RJ45 ports. So now what you would do is, remember, this is just an example, you would plug in your 3.5 millimeter jack that side, and then you would plug in your RJ45 to twin phono the other side, and then, if pretend now that this lead is however long it is, 10 meters or 20 meters, we will now have a 3.5 millimeter in to your Amazon dot, and then out of that will come your twin phono, or again, you might have another one of these, so it will come out as a 3.5 millimeter jack that you can plug into your aux in on your hi-fi. But if you're plugging it into a TV, you'll probably be doing it this way here. So I just wanted to do this so you could visualize what I've actually got in my house. So now I'm actually gonna show you the complete setup. So if we have a look here, I've got a lead coming out the back. The reason I've moved it from here to over here, originally I had it over in that corner, but the problem I had is my Wi-Fi signal wasn't very good in that very corner because my Wi-Fi router is underneath the stairs. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pushing the distance and the signal was quite weak over there. Also, I had a better Bluetooth connection by moving it here. So what I've done is I've got the USB power supply, which is this lead here. So that's just plugged into a normal 240 volt plug socket. And then I've got the 3.5 millimeter jack that goes up here 
and then it goes around the cabling around here and it goes all the way up here just turn the lights on it goes up here and then if we have a look here it comes down it's this black lead here now I only had a 10 meter one so I just had to cable tie up the excess but if you have a look I've got my little headphone splitter there so this part here is the feed and then it splits the signal now I've got two cables going out I've got one cable this black one here that goes up and it goes into my patch panel here yeah so that's using that 3.5 millimeter plug to an RJ45 plug so that's going to bring me into my patch panel under the stairs this is the feed but also because I wanted sound in the kitchen because remember as soon as you plug a 3.5 millimeter jack in it's not going to work on the little speaker on the dot itself so I've had to just run this other little cable up here that has its own power supply here and then I've got a couple of speakers just hidden above the kitchen cupboards over there to give me sound in the kitchen so that's that part of it done and then I'm now going to show you under the stairs because this will push that, that audio signal through here and it will end up under the stairs. Okay, so now we're going under the stairs. Right, so this is all my, uh, my patch panel and my router or my router as you guys will know it in the rest of the world. And what I needed to do is I needed to find out where that audio signal was coming out. So the one from the kitchen was actually coming out on port six down here. So what I did is I then need to get that signal to distrib distribute to all the other ports around the house. So what I've done here is I've used a little RJ45 to four port adapter. So this isn't like a network switch, don't get it mixed up with one of these network switches. This is a very simple device here and all it does is whatever goes on pin 1 here will go to pin 1 here, here, here and here. Whatever goes to pin 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 will also come up on here, 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 here. So if you like it's just like a quad adapter. Now you don't have to get yourself one of these because they are actually very rare to get. But what you can do is you, uh, you can do the method I showed you earlier. So you can convert the 3.5 millimeter cables into an RJ45 at the end and then you will have a 3.5 millimeter cable here which is live the main feed you can then put it into a splitter plug maybe get a 3.5 millimeter coupler to attach on one of those cheap little splitter plugs that you get for example one in five out and then you can do loads of little leads again little RJ little 3.5 millimeter sockets to RJ45 plugs to plug into your different ports but in this one here to make it a little bit neater I did use one of these so this wire here now this white adapter is live on pins 4, 5 and 8 and then what I did is I used yellow patch cable just to keep it straight so I knew which ones were the audio ones and then I put them through to different rooms in the house so if you have a look I've got one going up here to number 7 on the top rack and then I've got another one going to here on number 22 and then I have got another one going to number two here now on this one here as I say I'm going to show you the whole setup so hopefully it will make more sense on my daughter's in my daughter's room I only had the one ethernet cable well there is more up there but to be honest I couldn't really be bothered to get into them so what I did is I used an economizer a data voice economizer and what this does is it allows you to shove two signals down the one cable so for example on this one here I've got the internet signal to connect up the TV so I can watch things like BBC iPlayer and then this one here will be the audio so down this one cable now I've got the internet signal and the audio running down the one cable and then at the other end which I will show you I then have another one of these which splits the signal back into two again so this combines it into the one cable and then there's another one of these at the other end in my daughter's room that splits it back into the two now if you had a really quick internet connection you wouldn't want to be using these because with these you're limited to 100 megabits per second so at the moment from my router I'm get, I've got a 70 megabit service so this is fine for me because it goes up to 100 megabits because it only uses four wires well if you were to have for example a 200 megabit 
service then you would need to be using all eight wires but here I'm limited to 70 meg at the moment anyway so I'm just using one of these adapters okay I don't really need to use this I've kind of done this for the video to show you different ways of distributing signals around your house so hopefully that will make sense there now and I'm going to show you the connection to each of the TVs right okay so by the main TV here now you can see this little 45 plug here Okay, and that goes into a 3.5 millimeter to two RCA lead. So this is the other end of the RJ45 plug that goes from here just to here. And then it goes to a SCART adapter down the back. So on this TV, the only way I could get it to work was via one of these SCART adapters. So as you can see there, I've got my audio right and left and it's gone in and an out switch. So obviously I'm pushing the signal into the SCART, okay? So now from the echo dot in the kitchen, it goes through the patch panel, through that little four port adapter, comes up on one of my ports over there, and from there, it goes into here, and now that will allow me to get the sound traveling through to this TV here. Now this TV, like I said earlier, does have inputs for right and left audio, but it wouldn't work. The only way I could get it to work is via the TV, so perhaps somebody watching this will know the reason why. Maybe it only livens up when you put the this, the picture into it as well, which I find hard to believe, but uh, I couldn't get it to work unless there's not enough, not enough power there or something, I'm not too sure. But anyway, if you have a look now, if I was to put the input to SCART, you have to put obviously the input to the relevant input. So at the moment, I've got it plugged into extension two. So if I was to go up to another one, it wouldn't be working, but if I go to extension two, it will work. So if I was to say, and this again. What time is it in Florida? There are two time zones in Florida. You see? Possible and times are 10.37 If I was to go to TV, it will no longer be making that sound. Yeah, so you can hear now, it's making a normal sound and what you hear is in the kitchen. There we go. So it's good because obviously you don't have to have this. It's only if you want the multi-room because I'm really going to use it in here. It's only if I was to have a party that I might want the music pumping out everywhere. In which case then I'll just put it to extent input extension two and then it will work. Apart from that, nobody needs to know that it's there because it doesn't do anything. It's not going to affect the Xbox playing or the TV playing. So that's that one there. Now with this one here, basically exactly the same setup again, but this is a slight bit different, so I've got the I've got this one here going into the port, so remember the four port adapter under the stairs is now coming to this one here and on this one, again, I couldn't get it to work on this TV so what I had to do is I had to put it to the line in on the actual computer itself so if you have a look at the back of your desktop a lot of the time you will see like a light blue colour which is uh, going to be this one here. You can see that I've got this one here is microphone. Then I've got, uh, I think it's out and an in. So if I have a look there, you can see, it's probably hard to see, but it's like a light blue color. So that's like a line in. So now what it will do is it will, Alexa will now be working via my computer. So if I, if I was to say, Play Ed Sheeran. Shaving songs by Ed Sheeran. Okay, so I can mute it. That's from the kitchen, that sound, but then... Yeah. That's it. Now, let me just pause it. Now let's say if I actually wanted to watch a YouTube video instead, I, I need to change the input because I don't want the line in. If somebody was listening to music somewhere else in the house, it's going to be working here and I wouldn't want to do that. So let me just go to one of my videos. Right, so if I wanted to watch a different video now, I would have to disable the line in because I don't want it working here. For example, now if my daughter was listening to something in the bedroom, I don't want it coming through here. I might want to watch my own YouTube video. So what you have to do is you have to go down to this speaker icon down here, right click, go to playback devices, and then you need to go to where it says recording, and then I need to disable line in, and I'm gonna disable stereo mix as well. So just right click line in, go to disable, stereo mix, right click, disable, and then press okay, 
and when I then go to one of my videos, you will see now that it will be working here. First time you're setting up your and the sound's coming through the speaker. And if I was to play some so music, you, to is, you, need to press and hold you can see now it's working in the other room. Let me just lower it down. You see, still working in the kitchen, but I've got the sound coming through here now. For a second, and it will start flashing. Yeah. Now what will is okay, so that's how you do that. And then if you want to listen to it again, you're just going to have to enable, click right click here, playback devices, and then you're going to have to go to recording, right click enable, and stereo mix enable, and then you'll find that it should be bringing the line in again. So that's that one here. Right, this one here was probably the easiest one to do, really straightforward, because it is actually designed to have an aux in. So it's an old CD player that I've got. And if you have a look there, it says in, aux in. Okay, so all I've got to do is when I play the song downstairs, it comes up here, and then if I unplug that, it disconnects it. And if I plug it in again, it works. Okay, so that was a real simple one. Right, and now in this room here, this one is a lot more complicated, but the reason I've done this one is because a lot of you might have network points around your house but you might only have one and you might be using that for your smart TV or your laptop or your PC but you can still get it to work via audio as long as you're happy with having just a hundred base Ethernet so basically up to a hundred megabits per second. Now if you have a look here I have got the white cable that comes up from the Ethernet port so I've actually got Ethernet ports hidden under the floor down there and then it comes up to this point here now originally this was plugged straight in to the Ethernet in on the TV but what I've done is I've plugged it into a little RJ45 coupler so out of that I've then got my economizer that I explained about before which splits the same as the one downstairs do you remember it splits the one cable, it splits the eight pins into two directions. So four pins to one port on the bottom of it and four pins to the other port. Now, you do have to buy the correct ones. If they've got a gray sleeve, it's gonna depend who you buy them from, but if it's got a gray sleeve, it's gonna be data data. If it's got a green sleeve, it's gonna be data voice. And if it's got a red sleeve, it's gonna be voice voice. Now it does make a difference because remember, the data is gonna be using pins one, two, three, and six, while the voice is gonna be using the middle two pins, four and five. So if you've got two data datas, it's gonna be splitting up pins one to eight on the feed onto one, two, three, and six, and one, two, three, and six on the other port. So you won't get any voice down that one because it's not splitting it onto pins four or five. So you have to buy the correct one. And then out of it, I've just got one ethernet cable, the fat one here, that feeds into the ethernet port on a TV to give me things like BBC iPlayer and catch up TV. And then I've got this one here, which again is the RJ45 that I've butchered. It's just a phono left and right. So at the moment, I've plugged it into the component one. I could have plugged it into this one here. It's these two here. And then all I have to do on this TV is have to select component. So turn it on. So it still works fine on normal TV. You can still use it. No, nobody needs to know that it's connected to anything else. But then when you go to input, although it's not lit up, that's because I presume there's not enough power, you can still move your way over to it. It's a component. And now that will be working on Alexa downstairs. So if we just press play again, you see it's coming through here. And yet I still got the internet signal here. So if I pause that, and if I was to go to input, so although I've shared that cable, I can still go to netcast here. This is a really old LG, LG TV, oh, this one. It's going to either slow. But there you go. So now it's going to start kicking on to BBC iPlayer or to whatever you want to go to. On this TV, it's so old, there's not really much you can do apart from BBC iPlayer. And there you go. BBC iPlayer is up. So... Although it seems like it's a, a bit of a headache having to do that, it isn't actually that hard. All you're doing is you're putting an economizer on both sides of the cable that then allows you to put two signals in and two signals out. Now, I have done a separate video on those economizers, so if it's confusing, just please watch that. But there you go. Hopefully, you found that video useful. So that's how you can get multi-room audio in numerous rooms by using things like your Bluetooth speaker in the bathroom or in any other room that you wish to use it. 
and then using things like your TVs and your old CD players. And it does work well. Sound quality to me is absolutely fine. Okay, so that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it made a little bit of sense. If not, you might have to rewind a few bits and go through it again. If you guys have any other ways of getting multi-room audio without spending, you know, between one and two thousand pound, kind of doing it on a shoestring, then uh, please let me know. What would be nice, I don't think it's possible, but maybe there's a device out there that is good, is if, for example, you could just have a Bluetooth device. So although the Alexa Echo Dot will only connect to one Bluetooth device, it'd be good if you could connect it to one Bluetooth device that would then distribute that Bluetooth signal to all the other Bluetooth devices. So you could buy a load of those little anchor speakers because they're only 16 or 17 pounds. And then if you had one device that could split the signal to all of them, then that'd be a really easy way of doing multi-room audio. So if you guys know about any other options, then please add it to the comments below and then it will help other people looking into doing this. Right, give it a thumbs up if this helps you out and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care, bye now.